Average Farm Owners Association of America encourages everyone to watch the full-length version of our context training presentation, but many small business owners are simply too busy to watch it in one viewing. So Team POAA is also making context available in five short episodes as a convenience to anyone who wants to learn some basic business law principles by exploring the context of our association's objections to a proposed settlement of three employment misclassification class actions. To be clear, if you're a current owner operating in California, Illinois, or Massachusetts, whether or not you want to opt in, opt out, or object to the proposed class settlement is a decision for you and for you alone. If you operate your business in any of the other 47 states, you may want to consider hiring an attorney or joining POAA and seeking permission from the court to intervene and object to the proposed class settlement for reasons we addressed throughout the presentation. Please, we encourage everyone to watch all five episodes. Greetings, and welcome to another training workshop by the Pepperidge Farm Owners Association of America. Today, we're going to explore some basic business law principles by exploring the context for our association's objections to a proposed class action settlement. More precisely, the context of today's presentation centers on the California, Illinois, and Massachusetts employment misclassification class actions, which were consolidated in a California federal trial court because the parties decided to settle the wage-related claims. We're going to consider a few basic business law concepts to help you better understand both the status of those cases and why you should care. If you're just now learning about the class action cases, you need to know that there were three employment misclassification class action complaints filed, one in Massachusetts, another in Illinois, and a third in California. All three complaints contend that the defendant, Pepperidge Farm, instituted unfair policies and practices to control distributors to such an extent that they're actually employees of Pepperidge Farm, and therefore, they're entitled to the statutory benefits of employment under the applicable state laws. In other words, frustrated distributors filed lawsuits in an effort to stop Pepperidge Farm's predatory policies and practices by demanding reimbursement for overtime, meals, vacations, business expenses, basically the same types of compensation and benefits that Pepperidge Farm pays its employees. To be fair, the defendant, Pepperidge Farm, denies liability for any of the causes of action alleged because all versions of its existing consignment contracts include a provision that expressly provides that franchise and distributorship owners are independent contractors, which is the exact opposite of employees. And all of the named plaintiffs signed the consignment contracts acknowledging their independent contractor status. Before we delve into any details, however, we need to make a few things crystal clear. If you're a current distributor operating in California, Illinois, or Massachusetts, whether or not you want to opt in, opt out, or object to the proposed class settlement is a decision for you and for you alone. Although you should be capable of making decisions about your business without expensive legal advice, we understand why you might want the help of an attorney to consider how best to proceed in this relatively complicated and important matter. We encourage you to consult with your lawyer. Please, get a legal opinion about the efficacy of the proposed class settlement. If you operate your business in any of the other 47 states, you might want to consider hiring an attorney or joining POAA and seeking permission from the court to intervene and object to the proposed class settlement for reasons that we'll address in just a few minutes. To be clear, this presentation is for informational purposes only. If you need or want legal advice, you have to hire an attorney. On that note, we want to make sure that every current owner knows that Pepperidge Farm Owners Association of America is a not-for-profit business league. Our slogan is, Protect Your Future. We exist for the betterment of the 4,000 small business owners operating through a Pepperidge Farm consignment contract. We grant a free basic membership to every current owner of an exclusive Pepperidge Farm franchise or an exclusive Pepperidge Farm distributorship. Simply visit our social media outlets and join the discussion. Any current owner interested in our value-added services 
please visit teampoaa.org to learn more about our paid membership levels. Anyone interested in providing in-kind and or financial support to POAA, please do not hesitate to use our contact page. It's super simple to connect with us, and we'd love to know what's on your mind. Some of you will remember this slide from a POAA training workshop from a couple years ago, which appropriately enough for today introduced this very idea within a completely different context. What is good enough? Just think about the question for one second, my best. Most of you flip the words around to answer the original question with another question. Is what good enough? If you think about it a little more, you'll probably come up with a couple more questions like, what do you mean by good? How do you measure enough? Which is precisely the point of this context presentation. The words we use to communicate our ideas are generally good enough to convey simple concepts. But the words that we commonly use in casual conversations are often imprecise, which is one of the reasons it can be so difficult for us to share all the nuances of complex concepts without first establishing a sufficiently detailed context, which typically requires that we ask a lot of questions and ultimately agree to specific definitions of inherently imprecise terms like satisfactory. How do you measure satisfactory service? Satisfactory to whom? Suffice it to say that language is extremely flexible because our words are merely an approximation of our compressed thoughts. And the words that we use too often do not actually mean what we really intended them to mean, which is why interpreting the original intent of the language and contracts or the true meaning of the terms and conditions in a proposed class settlement is such a tricky business. Please bear that in mind as we plow through the slides today. The context for today's presentation is to analyze the proposed settlement of the employment misclassification class actions in California, Illinois, and Massachusetts, and to establish the context to provide an explanation why POAA hired a law firm, Fox Rothschild, to object to it. But we need to get one thing straight right from the start. POAA does not object to Pepperidge Farm paying money to settle the wage-related employment misclassification class actions. We only object to Pepperidge Farm dangling that money to hook distributors on a really awful, drastically different new form of contractual relationship with it. And we'll explain that more in detail. We know that the agenda for today looks like some pretty dull stuff. And you probably think an introductory business law lecture will not be good enough to keep you awake for the next minute, let alone keep your attention until we get to the call to action. But please do not let this agenda scare you away. It seems like a pretty safe bet to say that Pepperidge Farm executives have suffered through at least an introductory business law class or two. And I promise you, we expended a lot of effort to transform these seemingly boring topics into an interesting and informative presentation. 